Hey everyone, if you're new to this channel, my name is Christine and this is Paranormal TV and I'm about to get dogged in the comments. So whenever I do these types of videos, people come for me in the comments so hard. But Paranormal Discussions are some of my favorite videos to film. It's meant to be a discussion. It's meant to throw out different beliefs, different facts, different opinions, and talking about them. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and I don't think there's anything wrong if your opinion differs from mine. So before you watch this video, just remember that you are allowed to have a different opinion than me, and you're allowed to express that opinion down in the comments. So I've been seeing this passage being thrown around a lot lately, and I really want to throw my two cents in as well. I gave you a little bit of backstory my grandfather was a huge Sylvia Brown fan. He loved Sylvia Brown. Every time Sylvia Brown was on, I believe it was Wednesdays on Montel Williams, you can guarantee that we were watching it. I was pretty young and I loved the paranormal even back then and so watching Sylvia Brown was always really fascinating for me and for a while I really believed in Sylvia Brown. If you don't know who Sylvia Brown is, she is one of the most famous psychics that ever lived. She is such a huge name. She was a household name. She probably has done thousands of predictions. There's many books by Sylvia Brown, many predictions via Montel Williams, and any other show she's done. I know that you could call her and have a phone session with her. I believe she did shows where you could go see her. She was big. I stopped believing in Sylvia Brown when I started to see her really get certain things wrong. This is what really shifted my opinion. It wasn't just one thing here and there, it was several really big things. So this is not an exposing video, I'm not going to go through and count everything that she got wrong, we're not going to go into great detail, we're not going to look at that, I just want to tell you my backstory with Sylvia Brown before we get into the good stuff. In one of Sylvia Brown's books, she predicted what people believe to be COVID-19. So what we're going to do is we're going to read the paragraph and then we're going to go statement by statement and talk about it. In around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived, attack again 10 years later, and then disappear completely. That does sound pretty convincing when you read it at first glance and you really think about what's going on with COVID-19. Now let's get into it a little bit deeper and I'm going to tell you why I don't believe this prediction. In around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and bronchial tubes. I'm going to stop right there. So let's be real nitpicky and start off with in around 2020. She doesn't say 2020, she says in around 2020. So it's a little bit vague, but it's not too vague. So if we're being really nitpicky, we could say what she didn't say in 2020. I don't want to focus on that too much. I just kind of want to throw that out there. It is not hitting the nail on the head. It's like almost hitting the nail on the head. You know what I mean? But like I said, we're not going to be too nitpicky. We're not going to sit there and say, well, that is why this prediction's wrong. That's not why I'm saying that I don't believe it. There's a little bit more. A severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes. This is the part I really want to focus on. The coronaviruses have been around for a while now. I probably didn't know about it because it hasn't made major headlines, and a lot of times they're just diagnosed as the common cold. What a lot of people don't know, and a lot of people do know, is that a common cold is almost always a virus. It can be bacterial, but a lot of times it's a virus. More times than not, it's a virus. So people who are really having a lot of issues with their lungs are people who are elderly and immunocompromised. These same people are at risk for any cold virus turning into pneumonia or chronic bronchitis or just bronchitis. I have Evans syndrome, hypogammaglobulinemia, and I have asthma. These three things really make me at high risk to develop pneumonia or chronic bronchitis through any cold including the COVID-19. There has been only one time that I can think of my entire life where I did not develop chronic bronchitis or pneumonia from a cold. This was this past year and I was doing infusions. I was doing IVIG. If you do not know, IVIG is an antibody infusion. So it took my really bad immune system and temporarily made it normal 
So temporarily I was walking around doing anything I wanted because I could. I had a normal immune system and I did get a cold in the midst of doing these infusions and fortunately for me for the first time ever I had enough antibodies where this cold just stayed a cold. It did not turn into chronic bronchitis. It did not turn into pneumonia. The longest I have ever been sick was for five months with chronic bronchitis. The longest I've ever been sick with pneumonia was about a month and a half, maybe, maybe a little bit more even. I was really sick during that time. Like the fact that I even remember having it is amazing because I mean, I was so sick. I was practically delirious. For us with horrible immune systems, this is not news. This is not a new thing. This is something that's actually very normal for us. Maybe not everyone, but I can guarantee you people who have any issue with their lungs, they are at much higher risk for bronchitis no matter what the virus is that they're getting as long as it, if it's an upper respiratory virus, if it's an upper respiratory infection, you're very likely going to have some issues with your bronchial tubes. Resisting all known treatments. So there are some antiviral medications that can work for viruses. However, a lot of viruses need to run their course. Have you ever gone to the doctor and complain of cold symptoms and they say, well, you know, it's a virus and I can't treat it. It just kind of goes along with that. There are, like I said, there are some antiviral medications, but for the most part, viruses run their course. And if you are treating a virus, you're really treating the symptoms. You're not going to shorten the length of time you're going to have the virus. Almost more baffling than the illness itself would be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived. Kind of like seasonal illnesses do. They come quickly and they come in hard like the flu. And they leave fairly quickly at the end of the season. That's what happens. Hello, future Christine here. I was sat down ready to edit this video and then I came across something that is even more reason not to believe Sylvia Brown. So apparently Dean Koontz wrote a book called The Eye of Darkness. Now I had read some Dean Koontz books back in the day. Never read The Eye of Darkness though. And in this book, which was written before Sylvia Brown's book, he said he mentions a deadly virus called the Wuhan 400 which he described as a severe pneumonia-like illness that spreads attacking the lungs and bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Verbatim. Verbatim from what Sylvia Brown wrote. This next part we cannot speak on, but it says attack again 10 years later and then disappear completely. So obviously we're going to wait 10 years from now. We're going to see if in 10 years this coronavirus comes back again and attacks in a very similar manner and then disappears and never comes back. We're gonna have to wait that out and in 10 years if that does happen I probably will eat my words and I will be believing in Sylvia Brown. So for me everything that she said nothing was extraordinary. She didn't if she had hit on the mass hysteria that's going around I feel like that would be more of a convincing prediction for me but the fact that she said things that are pretty common knowledge about viruses like most viruses do not have medications to treat them or the fact that it will be pneumonia like and bronchial tubes will be infected well any upper respiratory issues that is something that can happen for me none of it was very convincing if she did hit on the mass hysteria, the people going crazy, the people buying everything off the shelves, um, or maybe the fact that social distancing has become a very big thing that people are doing and a very necessary thing for, I have like thoughts that I'm going to add at the end of this, but it is a very necessary thing and people are doing that. Maybe she hit on the social distancing, hit on the mass hysteria, the overbuying, then I would be more inclined to believe her. I do want to read the paragraph at the bottom that no one's talking about. Strides in the mental health in the first half of this century will be extraordinary, virtually eliminating the majority of the disorders. I really don't see 
this happening but if this does happen this will be a much more convincing prediction to me i hope i'm wrong i hope sylvia brown was legit i hope that these predictions are legit and that is something that we will see because that will be amazing i really wish people would take illnesses more seriously all the time i wish people would take the flu much more seriously when i get the flu i am extremely sick uh, last year I had 105 fever with the flu. I was so sick for two weeks. It was horrible. Um, really, like it's extraordinarily bad when I get the flu. And I know a lot of people do get very sick with the flu that are immunocompromised. And people who aren't even immunocompromised get really sick with the flu. So I wish people would kind of practice social distancing when they're sick all year round. And not just when there's a pandemic, I really wish that this was something that people thought more of. I know that people will have to go to work sick sometimes. And I'm not saying like, oh, you can't afford to take off, you're a horrible human. I mean, people who get sick and still go around people when they are sick for fun. Like, oh, yeah, I, I just have a cold. I'm just going to come hang out. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you about the cold until I'm at your house and I'm sneezing into the air. That stuff gets on my nerves so bad. So I wish people would have this common decency already. Um, it's really unfortunate that people do just go around other people when they're sick and they don't care. I cannot stand when that happens. When people come around me sick, I'm like, yo, why are you here? Go home. Go home. You need to leave. It's one thing when you're not contagious. But when you are contagious and you know you're contagious and you come around somebody doesn't matter if they're immunocompromised, does not matter if they're elderly or not. You just come around and spread your germs. That is rude. And I just think that people should have been practicing social distancing way back when COVID-19 wasn't in effect. I'm just saying. I had the flu really, really bad. And someone came over to my house. And I was like, why are you here? I have the flu. <laughs> like, do you want to get it? Go home. One time I I was very sick all month and I kept getting the stomach virus. Like everyone in my house had it and we just kept like cycling it around. And I got the stomach virus I think four times, four or five times, I can't remember now, in one month. And my best friend and then um, a family member I was really close to, one of my cousins, complain that I didn't come around them enough I was like well do you want it because it's highly contagious because we all got it here I mean I could come over I could puke on you if you'd like anyway we're getting off topic I'm rambling I just wanted to sit down and discuss this with you guys I wanted to hear what you guys think do you believe in this prediction do you believe in Sylvia Brown let me know down below I hope you guys enjoyed remember if you're sick Stay away from people, wash your hands, cough and sneeze into your elbow. This is something that drives me nuts when people don't do it. Do that, cough or like sneeze into your shirt, cough into your shirt. I don't care. Just cover your freaking mouth without your, not your hands. So don't do, don't do it with your hands. Don't. Have good hygiene, leave things on the shelves for other people and have a good day. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you're not part of the cool team already, I would love to have you here. And you can do so by clicking the icon to the right of me. I promise you it's fun. We have a good time here. And if you're just wanting to watch more paranormal content, I have a few videos linked down below for you guys.